Hello everyone, welcome to the end of day wrap at the end of day one of Pro Tour Shadows of Innistrad. Rich Hagen, Brian David Marshall here with you. Uh, BDM, every Pro Tour lives up to the hype because every Pro Tour is great. Today, however, just, well, you explain it. I think the word you were looking for is absurd. Yeah, that'll do. <laughs> that'll do very nicely. absurd density of talent, mm -hmm. experience, uh, star power, uh, just clustered at the top tables, constantly parading through the feature match area, great decks, exciting drafts. Uh, just, uh, it's just been, it's been amazing. And, you know, I'm looking at these draft pods for tomorrow, and it's going to be even more absurd tomorrow morning. For sure. So why don't we start with the headline, which is that there are two 8-0 players. They are two of the most popular players in the history of the game. They are two of the most decorated players in the history of the game. Who will we see facing each other in round nine tomorrow for the last perfect record yep. at PTSOI? Players who at one time were teammates. Mm -hmm. uh, Brad Nelson, the 2010 Player of the Year, uh, playing against Pro Tour Berlin champion and Pro Tour Hall of Famer Luis Scott Vargas. And that was Brad Nelson's first ever match. At the Pro Tour. Yeah, absolutely. Brad These Nelson guys against Louis you know, Scott Vargas. Pro Tour, Pro Tour Honolulu, you know, there was some guy, FF Freak, who mm -hmm. had done pretty well in block constructed on Magic Online. We're like, oh, I wonder if this guy's qualified for the Pro Tour. And sure enough, first round of that Pro Tour, he plays against Louis Scott Vargas. Finishes ninth at that Pro Tour, or tenth, somewhere in there. Yep. So, those are your two undefeateds, but that's not enough for a draft pot of eight. We need at least six more. In fact, exactly six more. So why don't we get to the big board and we'll walk you through the top of the standings right now. So there you have Brad Nelson, Louis Scott Vargas at eight and oh. Then it's seven and O's all the way down, right the way to Steve Rubin in 12th. Then you've got the draws and then some of the six twos. But let's concentrate on that side, BDM, because those first eight, assuming that they all deign to show up, will give us our first draft pod. And quite frankly, if I'm Alan Wu, <laughs> I don't get to sleep tonight because that is one of the craziest pods I've ever seen. Player of the year, Hall of Famer, Hall of Famer, world champion, Grand Prix champion. Uh, Five yeah. Grand Prix top eights, world champion again. And rookie of the year. Right, uh, just absolutely astonishing. So John Finkel, kind of, this is how absurd today's been. John Finkel is not the headline act at seven and one. Right? Seth I Mainfield's mean, not the headline act at seven and one. He's the reigning world champion of magic. Right. It's crazy. Right. Yeah. It, it is just a, an astonishing uh, run for all of those. Dan Lanthier, not yet got a Pro Tour top eight to his name. Valentin Mackle, the same, trying to get over that hump. A bit like Fabrizio and Terry figure, who has lots of Grand Prix success, looking to go up to that next level. Katz Hiromori, of course, 2005 world champion. Yeah, we, but, heard Frank, we heard Frank Karsten talking about that event during the uh, Team Eureka video. And Michael Majors, his reward for that incredible Avacyn is to be in pod two with Taria Kakumai. And then over this side, you'll see Max Mollish, um, who is just punching way above his weight. Great job by him. Steve Rubin, 7-1. You'll have the two draws. They could go at it again. Jeremy Dezani and Shodi Yasuoka, they drew against each other in that last round. They could play each other tomorrow. Indeed, it seems very likely that they will. Thiago Rodriguez and Michael Bonda of Denmark, who very quietly has had an excellent day, they'll be in pod two. But BDM, not just about people. It's always about that marriage of people and cards. That's what makes Magic so great. The cards, we had two formats, SOI Limited and then the new standard, delivered on both fronts. Oh, absolutely. We, we saw that the... Uh, limited format got very, very fast uh, over the weekend coming mm. coming into this event. Uh, fa uh, <clears throat> Fabrizio and Terry won the Grand Prix playing a very, very aggressive deck with lots of pump spells and combat tricks. Yeah, and it was rush of adrenaline rush, all the way, yeah, wasn't and it? Yeah, and, and you just saw the format constantly speeding up. Uh, and then we, we saw the matches here were playing out at a blistering pace. We would go 20 minutes into the round and the feature match would be empty. But... Seth Manfield did 3-0 with Rise from the Tides. So it's, you know, it's not all fast beatdown decks. 
out there right now. And look, that's an incredible trick because generally the build around the uncommons demands so much of you that the format cannot be so quick as to not sustain them. So the fact that you can still have these blisteringly fast aggro decks and yet be playing this and, you know... I or, think that's or, still or, to be settled about the format. I talked to a couple people like, well, you know what? The format's too fast for those build arounds. And there's some other people like, well, these build arounds... No, are, it isn't. These build arounds are too powerful to not build huh. around them. So very interesting to see how that plays out. Yeah, so we get part two tomorrow. Everyone at 4-4 four, four or better comes back. They will draft again in tables of eight. That's why we know that one to eight will be seated round uh, again. Uh, and then once we get past rounds 9, 10, and 11, then it's standard all the way. Coming in, BDM, there was a target on the back of Bant Company, and usually someone comes up with a way to beat it. What's interesting today is that people have come up with lots of different ways to attack it, and some are being more successful than others, while Bank Company itself is not being obliterated, far from it, because it turns out Collected Company, bit of a card. Yeah, no, it, it's true. I mean, we talked to Brad Nelson playing uh, Goggles Ramp, and that was a deck that they chose specifically. You know, they were like, well, we think we want to play this deck. If Bad Company is going to be the, the, the number one deck, Bad Company, you know, just dominated the previous weekend standard events. And they were like, great, we have our deck. It beats Bad Company. You know, we talked to uh, Luis Scott Vargas about their deck. You know, and they're like, okay, well, we have this deck. It does all this stuff. It's really good against Band Company. Oh, well, I guess we found the deck. We, you know, we have our target. We have our deck. So it's kind of interesting to see that. You know, I talked to players with uh, Esper Planeswalkers decks, the, uh, the East-West Bowl guys. Right. Same thing. They're like, well, I don't know, you know, if this deck will be great two weeks from now. But right now, for this tournament, this deck is perfect. So, you know, lot, lots of choices, you know. And Band Company, by the way, still a very solid deck for this tournament. It's done very well. Right. And we are at only the halfway point, and we've only had five rounds of standard. There are five more to come tomorrow. But before that, we get the shakeup of SOI draft. It's going to be an amazing day, too, before we cut to the top eight. You'll see each and every event as it happens through the day tomorrow. We, we could only record two of these. <laughs> Okay, we're going to go and talk about whether we do Alan Wu or Dan Lanthier um, in pod one tomorrow, or maybe Brad Nelson or Louis Scott Vargas or John Fink. Yeah, we need some more time on this. So why don't you go away? We'll do the same. And let's all agree to meet tomorrow. One thing, though. Overnight, we head for the draft master because we've done one set of draft. Oh. We've got one to go. Why don't we take a look at the standings in the draft master after day one? So here we go right now. And bear in mind, this is not some meaningless title where we go, well done, you're good at limited. This has huge ramifications. So the person who does, has the best individual record in the draft rounds across four pro tours this season, this is the third who does against all four Pro Tours, will get a seat at the World Championship. All right. So, right now, Thiago Saparito of Brazil leads by two points. So, a draw away is Christian Calcano and Tim Wu. Of course, they're both playing tomorrow. John Finkel, 36 points. So, that's 12 wins in draft over uh, the four, the three uh, Pro Tours so far. Over 15 rounds. Right. So, then Tharma Ratnam. Yasuoka, Matei Zadokai, and then once we get over here, then we're, again, a draw down one more step, Marcio Carvalho, and then you've got all the 33-pointers there, uh, which are just a phenomenal list of players. Chion, Dajon, Friedman, Holiday, Polat Rotman, and Sigrist. Polat Rotman, though, won't get to come back and draft. He does not he get to draft tomorrow. tomorrow. Yeah, so, true. right now, Thiago Saprida goes to bed, the leader in the draft master. He gets three more rounds tomorrow to try and pad his lead going into Sydney. And worth noting, there's also a constructed master birth for at the world championship and once we get a little further along tomorrow we'll give you an update on that and tell you who is looking to be the complimentary seat at mm. the world championship to the limited master meanwhile we came in with close to 400 players and two wide open formats we know a little bit more about kind of all three of those constituent parts of each Pro Tour. We hope that you've enjoyed day one and we can't wait to see you all again for day two of Pro Tour Shadows over Innistrad when Nelson, Scott Vargas, Mackel, Wu, Finkel, Manfield, Mori, and Lanthier will go at it first thing. Set your alarms. This is do not miss magic. We'll see you tomorrow. For Rich Hagen, Brian David Marshall, all the team here. Bye. <laughs>